Hello and welcome to this uh, course on therapeutic ultrasound and immuno-oncology. I'm Frederic Padilla with the uh, Focus Ultrasound Foundation where I manage our program on gene and cell therapies and I'm also affiliated with the University of Virginia uh, where I conduct research in the field of immuno-oncology. So today uh, we're going to provide an overview of the uh, current state of the field and future directions of therapeutic ultrasound and cancer immunotherapies. And we are trying to answer these uh, this, uh, three uh, major questions. Uh, first, what is the biological rationale for combining therapeutic ultrasound with immunotherapies? And in particular, what are the motivations for therapeutic ultrasound interventions in patients with systemic diseases? Second, uh, why uh, is it still a challenge to combine therapeutic ultrasound and immunotherapies? And finally, based on what we've learned so far, how can we optimize these therapies? So our outline will be uh, in five parts. We will first discuss immune response and immunotherapies, then review uh, uh, the state of the field and the uh, state of the knowledge on therapeutic ultrasound modalities to foster an anti-cancer immune response. We will discuss clinical translations of these modalities the uh, knowledge gaps and unanswered key questions. And finally, we will conclude and provide some resources. So let's start with the beginning and try to get an overview, and really broad overview, a uh, simple overview of the uh, immuno-oncology landscape. So what is cancer? And let's start here. Cancer is a genetic disease. These uh, uh, um, genetic alterations can come from uh, uh, hereditary uh, sources, can come from diseases, from infection, from exposition to chemical UV radiation, and of course, uh, from regular cell division that takes place during life, where uh, at each division, some mutations uh, uh, in the DNA accumulates, and this is why uh, the prevalence of cancer augments with age. So why are we talking about this? Because uh, cancer occurs uh, uh, when uh, function altering mutations appear in genes that control growth and survival, and these are called driver mutations. Uh, we have also uh, the presence of passenger mutations, but these ones are not no, have no known pro-tumor functions. So these mutations will uh, uh, result in the creation of altered protein, and in, in, in again in the grand scheme of things, what will happen is that our immune system will recognize this uh, altered protein as uh, very specific and, and to the cancer cells, and that will trigger an immune reaction to go identify this cancer cell that present this altered protein and kill this cancer cell. So uh, uh, if we have cancer still, it's, at, it's because something wrong uh, uh, um, happened in this uh, immunity cycles. And so all the challenge of the therapies is how to teach the immune system to recognize these cancer mutations and how to teach the Im effector immune cells to attack the cancer cells. So now cancer is defined or by uh, several uh, hallmarks and this is a, a cartoon from the uh, famous paper from uh, Einahan and Weinberg uh, uh, from 2000 that was updated by Einahan in 2022 that describe in a kind of a heuristic uh, manner all the different uh, very specific uh, uh, characteristics of cancer. And among them is this uh, avoid uh, immune destruction. And this is where we will place our focus uh, today. So <clears throat> our immune response uh, uh, involves two distinct arms. Uh, we have the innate immunity and we have the adaptive immunity. The innate immunity is the uh, first line uh, uh, response to uh, an aggression, to an infection, to an injuries, and it's always on. It's, it's a very rapid response that uh, can recognize uh, recognize or classes of, for example, microbi microbial pathogens. Um, so uh, you have uh, different uh, cells involved in this innate immunity, uh, such as uh, dendritic cells that we will uh, discuss later on, macrophages, natural killer cells, and so on. Uh, and then uh, the second step of, of our response is so-called the adaptive immunity. This, uh, uh, ad its name uh, is saying, is an adaptive uh, response, so it requires induction, it requires to be uh, taught how to uh, recognize specific uh, pathogen and, to, uh, and, and being 
uh, ordered uh, to mount a response against this, uh, this uh, specific pathogens or uh, uh, cancer cells, for example, for what we are interested on today. Uh, so it's a delayed response, so, so typically one week, two weeks in human, I mean, uh, it depends on, on, on the type of response. Uh, that, again, will be uh, very specific to recognize specific antigens, uh, for example, of microbes. And among uh, this uh, adaptive immunity are the T cells, uh, uh, and especially the, uh, at the, here, the, the uh, CD8 positive T cells, which are uh, uh, the effector cells of the uh, adaptive immune response against cancer, and this is where we will place uh, most of our focus today. So how does this work, this uh, tumor immunity uh, uh, circle? So let's have a, 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 a look. Uh, so tumor immunity at a glance, it, it all starts uh, here at the, at the bottom uh, with the uh, dying of some of the uh, cancer cells. Uh, when they die, they will release some uh, antigens and epitopes, so more on that uh, later, but again, some proteins, so pieces of protein, peptide, that are very specific to these cancer cells. Uh, then, uh, uh, in the tumor, uh, are present uh, so-called uh, antigen-presenting cells, such as the uh, dendritic cells, that will uh, uptake these uh, antigens, epitopes, peptides, migrate into the lymph nodes, where they're going to prime and to activate the T cells. So again, more on that later, but broadly speaking, what it means is that there will be a clonal selection. So clonal selection meaning the T cells, only the T cells that can recognize the specific uh, antigens, epitopes, peptides, will be selected, will be activated by the non-retic cells, and will be uh, uh, ordered to proliferate. And they will start then to migrate into the blood vessels guided by uh, uh, chemokines, uh, chemotaxis gradients um, to migrate into the tumors. Into the tumors, so there will be this interaction between the, uh, these uh, T cells and the cancer cells that will lead to the killing of the cancer cells and we start again and we have these uh, tumor immunity cycles. So just Two points again uh, of this cycle that I, I wanted to uh, go into a, just a little bit more details to uh, illustrate the, the fact that it's a complex sequential and multifactorial process. How uh, uh, the T cells are activated by these antigen presenting cells, and in this case, this is a CD4 T cells activated by uh, dendritic cells. So the first uh, signal that you see on the top is this uh, antigen-specific interaction. So again, uh, the T cells express on their surface uh, uh, the TCR, which is the uh, T cell uh, receptor, which are extremely specific uh, for uh, 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 peptides. Uh, so you have a, a, a huge number of variety of T cells present in your body that each one has a specific TCR. Uh, that have been designed, again, to recognize only specific peptides. So this is where this clonal selection will uh, happen. So you have this uh, interaction at this level between the uh, MHC, so the uh, major histocompality complex, which is the, uh, the place where the uh, peptide will be presented by the non cells, and the TCR, that will be the place where the uh, peptide will be recognized by the uh, T cells. But that's not enough, right? It's not enough. So you need a second level of signaling to activate these T cells now, to tell them you need to do something. I mean, okay, you've been selected, but now you need to do something. And this is what's called the co-stimulatory molecules. For example, the interaction between the uh, CD40 um, receptor and CD40 ligands. And this is still not enough, so the uh, T cells have been selected, have been activated, but now we need to tell them, okay, what to do. And this is the uh, third level of signaling that will be the instructive cytokine that will tell the T cells, now this is what you need to do. So again, this is just to illustrate the, the fact that this is a, a multi-sequential, multi-parametric, if you want, multi-level uh, uh, processes, and that the fact that, for example, uh, we hear very often that uh, with focused ultrasound or therapeutic ultrasound, we can increase the release of, uh, of tumor antigens. 
Yes, but that's not enough, right, to, to uh, trigger an anti-cancer immune response. We need also to have all these different uh, signaling uh, um, activities that takes place in order to effectively mount an anti-cancer uh, immune response. A second uh, illustration of that is the, uh, how the uh, T cells will recognize the tumor cells. So we talked about uh, mutations uh, uh, in cancer, and so we talked about the fact that this mutation in the DNA uh, will, be, um, will result uh, in the uh, secretion, expression of uh, specific uh, and mutated proteins. These proteins through the proteasm will be cleaved, and small pieces of these proteins, peptides, will then uh, be uh, transferred into the endoplasmic reticulum of the uh, cancer cells to be presented on, the, on their surface by this famous uh, uh, MHC, major histocompatibility complex. And the, uh, again, the uh, T cell, in that case, in this illustration, this is a CD8 plus uh, T cell, so this effector T cells in the uh, uh, killing of cancer cell will recognize the uh, cancer cell through this uh, MHC, TCR, uh, T cell receptor uh, interaction. And the point of this slide is uh, uh, to say that uh, it's not uh, because you have mutation, it's not because you have uh, mutated proteins and specific peptides that, that will be sufficient, again, uh, to, to really uh, mount an active, effective uh, anti-cancer immune response. Only some mutations uh, can really be uh, immunogenic, and these are called neoantigens. Uh, so, uh, again, in a nutshell, uh, in, if, you, if we try to describe the uh, tumor uh, and what's called the tumor microenvironments, there is a very complex interplay between uh, the adaptive immune system, the innate immune system, the cancer cells, the uh, cells that uh, uh, are here for, to, to, uh, for the stroma, like the, the fibroblasts. So we have the B cells, we have the uh, cytotoxic uh, uh, T cells, we have the uh, Treg or the T uh, regulatory uh, cells, which are here to uh, turn down the uh, inflammatory uh, uh, response. Uh, we have the uh, memory T cells that are uh, T cells that have been activated in the past and are here to uh, again to uh, monitor uh, the pot potential reapparition of uh, these specific uh, antigens. All of this, of course, is mm, uh, um, inter 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 uh, connected with the uh, uh, cancer cells. The tumor is. Uh, is uh, infiltrated by blood vessels to provide nutrients, to provide oxygens. So you have the core of the tumor, you have the uh, uh, invasive margin of the tumor that you can see here at the, at the, at the bottom. Uh, you have these fibroblasts that will secrete the, uh, the stroma, the structural uh, um, uh, network if you want, of the tumor. And we have also the presence of a lot of uh, uh, immune cells from the innate uh, uh, innate uh, immune system, so uh, such as the uh, MDSC, so myeloid derived suppressor cells, which are here also a role more immunosuppressive, so again to try to turn down the anti-tumoral immune response, the uh, natural killer cells, for example, and the dendritic cells, uh, the uh, macrophages, uh, uh, so antigen presenting cells. So again, uh, the idea here is to, to say that this is a very complex interplay and sequential uh, uh, series of events between all these protagonists that will lead uh, or not to an effective uh, anti-cancer immune response. So we have this uh, virtuous uh, uh, tumor uh, immunity cycle. Uh, and so what can go wrong? Uh, well, in fact, everything can go wrong. Uh, so first, uh, even if antigens, epitopes uh, are released, there can be that there is a lack of very strong uh, antigen uh, or neoantigens, as we discussed before. So even if you release these antigens, maybe they are not strong enough to really uh, generate this uh, activation of dendritic cells and these virtual and be at the source of these virtuous uh, immunity cycles. Now, assuming we have very strong neoantigens it can happen that there is minimal activation on cancer-specific T cells, for example, at the level of the uh, lymph nodes. Even if you are able to activate cancer-specific T cells, uh, 
it may be that you will have poor uh, T cell infiltration. Uh, there is poor migration, there is poor uh, chemotaxis uh, uh, that uh, is taking place, uh, and so poor uh, migration and trafficking of the T cell into the tumor. So even if this, uh, we uh, arrive to this uh, stage where everything went, went well before, uh, the cancer cells now will try to react to this inflammatory process uh, and to this aggression from the immune system, for example, by downregulating uh, this major histocompality complex, uh, try to hide uh, from the recognition by the uh, cytotoxic T cells. And even then, if assuming we again arrive at this stage with the uh, still uh, uh, recognition of the cancer cell by the uh, cancer T cells, there, are, there will be uh, a lot of uh, immunosuppressive factors uh, uh, and, and immunosuppressive cells in the tumor microenvironments that will turn down this uh, effective immune response. So <clears throat> this is um, one example uh, of what can go wrong, this is called adaptative immune resistance. So we talked about the fact this recognition uh, um, of the tumor cell by the T cell through this uh, major histocompatibility complex MHC uh, uh, and TCR, T cell receptor, that can recognize this specific peptide that is expressed on the or presented on the surface of, this, uh, of these tumor cells. But when this inflammatory response uh, will take place and when in inflammatory cytokines, for example, will be expressed, starting to be expressed by the T cells, that can in turn trigger a, a kind of counter reaction, if you want, by the, uh, um, by the cancer cell that will start to express on this surface this uh, PDL1 uh, uh, ligand which then will bind uh, uh, to uh, activate the uh, PD-1 receptor on the T cell. And this is a signaling uh, pathway to turn down the activity of the T cell. So uh, uh, this adaptative immune resistance uh, uh, will, um, uh, when it's uh, present, this is where, for example, we heard about uh, immunotherapy, this uh, checkpoint inhibitors and this uh, uh, anti-PD-1, anti-PDL1 uh, uh, axis of, of, uh, of therapy. This is to block, try to block this, uh, this, uh, this pathways interaction between the PDL1, PD1, uh, between the cancer cell and tumor cells. So, what can we do? Well, we can try to boost the uh, intratumoral immunity cycle, and this is again a cartoon uh, illustrating uh, intratumoral uh, immunotherapy uh, approaches. But we can think more generally uh, that what we can do is to try to boost uh, or to, to modify or stimulate this uh, uh, immunity cycle at every of the stages. So uh, uh, immunotherapies, uh, we have five types of uh, five classes of uh, cancer immunotherapies, cellular immunotherapy, immunomodulators, oncolytic viral therapy, monoclonal antibodies, and cancer treatment vaccines. Some examples, so cancer therapy, for example, you heard certainly about CAR T cells, that are chimeric antigen receptor T cells, that are you know, T cells that are harvested from the patient, re-engineered to express specific uh, T cell receptors, so the, the name uh, chimeric antigen receptor, to to really be able to target specific antigens uh, from on the cancer cells, and then they are th then reinfused to the patients. Checkpoint blockade, of course, anti PD anti PD one, anti PD L one, anti CTLF four that are immunomodulators, so uh, that will regulate and boost part of this uh, uh, immune system. This uh, they will uh, try to inhibit this uh, checkpoint that we discussed earlier. For example, this uh, PD one PD L one interaction between the cancer cell and the tumor cells to allow uh, or even to boost the activities of the of the T cells. You have oncolytic viral therapy, such as uh, TVEC, which are uh, viruses that will specifically infect uh, cancer cells without harming the normal cells and trigger uh, cell death of these uh, cancer cells. Monoclonal antibody that are protein that will attack specific part of the cancer cells, such as uh, rituximab uh, and anti-CD20. 
And finally, uh, cancer treatment vaccines such as uh, CPU cells or Provenge uh, that are um, vaccines that will uh, uh, train the immune system to recognize and destroy the cancer cells. So immunotherapy works, right? Um, and the difference between immunotherapy and standard therapy is that with uh, standard therapy, uh, typically you will have, so this, sorry, this graph uh, illustrated the, uh, um, uh, let's say, overall uh, survival rate, sorry, uh, percentage of patients alive uh, as a function of time. With standard therapy, what you will gain typically uh, is a short-term uh, uh, response, but at the end, uh, after a few years, uh, uh, there is relapse and the uh, percentage of the, uh, the survival rates uh, typically uh, um, is not very different from the untreated patients. With immunotherapy, this is different. This is a more uh, delayed uh, response, uh, so it will not act on the time to progression, but as you can see, it will considerably incure, uh, sorry, increase the uh, cure rates. Um, so you have at the end, after a few years, still uh, a very significant number of patients that are still alive and, and, uh, and that uh, did not present any relapse. And so uh, the issue is that, as you can see on this graph, and again, this is very qualitative, but that uh, only a fraction of patients respond to immunotherapy, and this is where there is a lot of room for improvement. So, <clears throat> Uh, immunotherapy has been uh, demonstrated to be able to improve the overall uh, survival rate across uh, several tumor types. Uh, they are effective in traditionally immune responsive tumors, but also uh, in other uh, solid tumors. And this is just uh, an example of uh, a clinical study with uh, uh, pembrolizumab, uh, so an anti-PD-1, uh, anti-PDL-1, if you want, uh, checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, but still, you can see that the response rate is limited typically to 20-40% of the patients. Uh, so one of the reasons uh, can be, again, the question of, of mutations and the creation of new antigens by the, uh, the, uh, the cancer cells. So this is a famous paper describing the uh, somatic mutational processes in uh, human cancer and trying to classify this different type of cancer as a function of the uh, uh, level of mutation that can be uh, found in the cancer cells. And the, the idea uh, be, being that uh, uh, the um, cancer such as, for example, melanoma, that very high uh, uh, mutational burden, uh, will most likely have more um, uh, neoantigens and are more likely to respond to immunotherapy, yeah, right? And so, and you can try to classify the, 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 the tumors by, by this rate of, of uh, production of, of neoantigen. So this is one possible uh, aspect of the uh, cancer that will be, uh, that will make the, uh, the um, patient more or less responsive to immunotherapy. But even in melanoma, where the checkpoint inhibitors uh, have a considerable success, you still have 20-40% of the patients that respond. So this is not the only explanation. So again, broadly speaking, the possible factors of fail failure of immunotherapies, uh, presence of absence of immune cells. If you don't have immune cells infiltrating the tumors, even if you give an immunotherapy, let's say, for example, a checkpoint inhibitors, uh, most likely you will not really increase the, uh, this, uh, this response. The, the now, even if you have immune cells, their polarity will be very important. Are they more immunosuppressive or uh, immunocompetent? How are they spatially located? Uh, uh, now, if you give immunotherapy, if you give a drug, uh, can the drug penetrate and be distributed homogeneously, for example, into the tumor? So again, at every uh, step of this uh, uh, tumor, tumor immun immuno immunity sorry, cycles, uh, uh, there are some, some, some uh, potential uh, um, failures. And so the whole field of uh, uh, nascent and developing field of uh, therapeutic ultrasound in immuno-oncology is to, to put this question of, of can we, with therapeutic ultrasound, uh, um, uh, bypass this, uh, these limitations.